Hello, fellow Crusaders, and welcome to our latest episode of the Weekly Crusaders. My name is Sean Waskrug. With me, as always, is Brian Michaels. And today, we are talking about two movies that came out during the week of July 16th to July 22nd. We've got a uh, Oscar drama that was uh, all through the Oscar races, um, and we also have a Michael Bay film that Brian and I both agree is completely underrated and, for the most part, fairly forgotten but deserves a lot more appreciation than it really, really gets, or lack thereof. Um, we're going to start on, and also, I also would like to point this out. Is this the first time ever that we both picked two movies that came out the same weekend? This is the first time we've ever done that? Because I didn't realize it until I was, like, doing all of like, these two came out the same fucking day. I, th I think we've done that back in the weekly Crusader. So I remember one time we picked, we had three movies that were the same weekend. Yeah, I was like, I, I, some other things. Week, weekend, weekend, we definitely did. But week, as far as weekly, weekly, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. So if, when, when I pull up, when I pull up the uh, graphics for the movies, like the same bot top five. Well, yeah, because it came out the same weekend, guys. <laughs> um, but first, we're gonna start with Brian's pick. This is the uh, film that I think. If, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty positive on it because this was a year out for me not being in the movie theater. This movie was under everyone's radar. This movie was not looked at by anybody as anything. And then it caught this storm, mainly because of the song. It caught this storm and then just became this like Oscar like underdog all the way through the next year for, for the 2006 Oscars. Was well, that it, it didn't have any like advanced hype on it because I mean, I mean people, people it knew like an indie film. Yeah, I mean, people had seen like Terrence Howard, like in supporting roles and some things like that, and and some of the other cast members and that, and that Ludacris was going to be in it, but there was not really any hype around it. It was just kind of like, oh, there's this movie coming out. But I think once the movie started hitting like festivals and stuff and started coming out, mm -hmm. it started getting like within like movie communities, it started getting some attention. Yeah. But it wasn't until, but even in theaters, it didn't get a whole lot of attention until kind of afterwards. You got like you said, the afterlife. Yeah. Well, we were talking about the 2005 film Hustle and Flow. Hustle and Flow came out July 22nd, 2005, had a budget of $2.8 million, which is why I said it was an indie film, had a weekend box office of $8.02 million. It was number seven its opening weekend, also its highest ranking, and had a finished box office of $23.56 million, $22.20 million domestic, and $1.36 million international. Um, yeah, for me, uh, this was a movie, like I said, completely flew under the radar, because Terrence Howard... I mean, you, he's one of those guys that's like, oh, he's the guy from that one movie. This was definitely a movie. This and then obviously him being an Iron Man was like, oh, everyone knows who Terrence Howard is now. But it was literally um, the, the song. Because didn't that win Best best Song? It did. Yeah, you know? it's like I thought it did. Um, uh, wow. I'm. Yeah, it's hot out here for a pimp. I was like, what the fuck was the fuck? Yeah, by 3 Six Mafia. Yeah. Yes, for 3 Six Mafia, which my, my best friend, Ryan, uh, loves 3 Six Mafia uh i we, we had this it was like that and like project pat he was just like dude let's listen to this and i was like uh all right bro that's <laughs> like when did you get gangster wrapped up in here like used to be like all marilyn manson and now it's all like here's three six mafia i was like that's a drastic change bro <laughs> but um but yeah this is brian's movie so i'm gonna let brian take it away on this yeah so so hustle and flow is basically the story of uh this memphis pimp and his two hoes uh, played by Taryn Manning and Taraji P. Henson. Um, well, there's also, yeah. there was also the third one. Oh, there was the third one. There was the third one, yeah. actually, well, actually thought... Tar Taraji actually wasn't currently a hoe because she was at home pregnant. She was a hoe, no mo. <laughs> but but what's, what's funny, what's funny, what's funny is, uh, not to completely sideswipe you, but the third the third one, I'm, uh, I was like, is that Mary J. Blige? I was like, no. And then I was like, is that the horribly acted other hoe from the phone booth movie? It's totally fucking. <laughs> she's she's the one that catch that they like. There he was trying. She was trying to coerce Colin Farrell out of the booth, and he was like, and he like called her a hoe, and she's the one that's like constantly screaming across the street because her pimp got shot. And I was like, I know I heard that annoying voice from somewhere before. I was like, you you the hoe from phone booth, and sure enough, she plays a hoe in this. She was also um, in Friday apparently. Um, yeah, yeah. So I guess she's found her niche. Um, <laughs> you but yeah, but it, it, this, this uh, Memphis pimp um, kind of, you know, just, just grind into to make a living with, you know, whatever it is he does. Um, but then he he learns that uh, Ludacris is a guy who grew up with them. Like he went to like the Skinny, same school. Skinny Black? Skinny same Black? Time. Yeah, Skinny Black. Yeah. 
Um, he doesn't blame himself. He's not ludicrous. <laughs> he he's come back to town for like this Fourth of July party and stuff like that. And uh, so he's gonna get a chance to meet him because he sells he sells weed. This guy at the, who works at the restaurant said, "Hey, come on out. You can sell out your shit." Um, around the same time, though, this guy basically wants to pay him for some weed with a Casio keyboard. And he gets a hold of that and starts playing around with it. And he decides, hey, you know what? I could start making music. Why couldn't I be like Skinny Black? Um, so he wants to record his own stuff and give it to Skinny Black so he can, you know, hopefully hook him up and make him a star. That's the basic plot of the movie. Um, so, of course, a movie about, you know, Memphis Pip. That's me and Sean's bread and butter, right? That's. It's, it's I really mean, weird. I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, so. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I didn't expect much coming into this movie. I'd, I'd heard good things about it, but I'm like, whatever, dude. It's got yeah. a cast of kind of nobodies. I mean, people he'd heard of, maybe, but that's about it. Um, but this was really, really good. I really like this. Um, I think that that uh, uh, Terrence Howard does a phenomenal job. Uh, he does all his own rapping in this, which I really appreciate because mm-hmm. he didn't have to lip sync and do something that would have ruined it. I think the actual songs in the movie are really well done, and they're kind of they fun. Are. They are. Yeah. And to watch me, you know, this like almost 50 year old white man just kind of rocking out to it is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> even in the theater, you can't help like nod your head. Um, but yeah, and then, I mean, but the cast cross, you have Anthony Anderson and DJ Qualls, which DJ Qualls, you think, how does he fit in this movie? But it works. He- he's been he's been playing that kind of not that kind of character. but He's been all up in that kind of situation since Road Trip. When he when he when he met the love of his life in Road Trip. So it's like that, he, he could basically be that same character. And just be into this. He pretty much is the same character. All the he time. is. Um, it's directed by DJ Qualls. Or not, sorry. I was like, not no. DJ Qualls. I was uh, like, that's news to me. You're talking, about DJ, <laughs> you're talking about DJ Qualls in the three. Um, directed by Craig Brewer, who uh, also dra- went on to direct. This is basically his first major film that went to the theaters. But he also did uh, Black Snake Moan. He did the Footloose remake, which you know I love. Um, Dolomite is my name. So, I mean, he's a, he's a good director. Um, so, I really like the stuff he's done. Um, the other big breakthrough in this was Traji P. Henson, who also did her own scene in this. Um, yeah, this, this was this was her breakout role. Yeah, she she got she Oscar nominated, for this, I believe. I believe her and Terrence both got nominated, didn't they? Yeah, 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 and and deservedly so, deservedly so. Um, I think that she does a great job. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like this is a movie that I never would have thought would be in my wheelhouse. I never would have like really sought this out and gone, oh, this is the movie for me. But I went and saw it, and I'm really glad I did because I, I've watched this movie several times since then. A large part of it's the music, but I really enjoy the story. And can we also, I, I, in my brain, I know, I know it's not, guys, so calm down. But I, in my brain, I treat this as a backdoor pilot to Empire. It kind of feels like that. I mean, I never watched well, Empire, well, but from what I know, yeah. Terrence Howard and Taraji B. Harrison in that as well, and they're married. Taraji was not nominated. Oh, I thought she was. No, not according to I him. think it's probably because the song was nominated and I always constituted her with the song, so I kind of just probably lumped them together. But no, but in Empire, it's Terrence Howard and Taraji P. Henson. They're a married couple, and they're a rap kingdom in that. So I was like, I always use Hustle and Flow as like the backdoor pilot. Like, this is what they were like before they became rich and, and all this kind of shit. So that's, that's how I do it in my brain. It's like, yeah, Taraji used to be a hoe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this was definitely a, a uh, hey, this is who I am. This is me, Hollywood, take notice for Taraji. Um, and Terrence Howard was like, you've always been around, but now you're like, oh, we have to start paying attention to you now. And I think also even for Anthony Anderson, because Anthony Anderson, he was always just like the fat black comedy character in like Transformers or right. uh, me, myself, Kangaroo and I mean, or what? Kangaroo Jack. Yeah, Kangaroo Jack. He was just always that like comedic, oh, he's, he's you know, he's fat or chubby. He's the funny comedic. And this is the first one who was like, he's still funny. But this is more of a dramatic turn. This is also, I thought, was a character turn for him as well. Even um, uh, Tyron Tyron Manning, I think she was she was like, oh yeah, she's you know generic white girl over here kind of thing. And then you know now that she didn't like blow up or anything. It was more like this, and then eventually like a few, like you know almost like a half decade later, she orange is the new black, and it's like oh okay, she's oh yeah, I remember Tyron Tyron Manning. She was she was really really good in Hustle Flow. She's actually really really good in this. But it was a great cat. DJ Quarles, I, I, I've always liked him. He gets shit on so much. But he's I one always... of those guys who he's never going to be like, you know, a A list actor or anything. But for the role he plays, he plays that role so well. I feel like he, every time, like, like, even like everyone knocks on the new guy. I was like, I, I liked him in that movie. And of course, Road Trip and, and other things he's in. I've always enjoyed him. He knows his assignment and he does it well. 
it might not be the best acting, but he's memorable in every performance. It's never a negative memorable moment. It's always like, he's, he's good in this. Because I, I love the one part where Anthony Anderson and uh, Terrence Howard are fighting. And he's, he's like, guys, 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 we don't have to do this. Can't we just smoke a blunt and just calm down? <laughs> Shit. And I was like, like that's why that's why you get someone like DJ Quarles for this movie. Um, but yeah, I uh, I remember I remember when Brian picked this. I was like, I don't want to watch Hustle and Flow. Like I, I like, both of my picks, but like I've seen it, and I was like, I was like, I I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm in the mood for this. And I, I watched it like first 15 minutes or so. I was like. I'm just not in the mood to watch this. And it wasn't until, uh, obviously, because in, 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 that's the hook of the movie is when he actually starts doing his own rapping and stuff. Yeah. But it's like, it's like once he started doing uh, Whoop That Trick, I was like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm. But I'm that's exactly now. the moment the movie kicks in. So I'm the same way that for that first, like, you know, 15, 20 minutes when he's just like, just him being a pimp, you're just like, okay, it's another yeah, one of these movies. Eh. But, but yeah. honestly, it was, it was more, even before that, it's the moment where they're, uh, when, he, when he meets Anthony Anderson, he's like, what do you do? And they, they go to the, the church and you have that one lady singing, which mm-hmm. didn't love her at the beginning of it. But by the end of it, she was great. But it's that moment where he, he's just, he always doing is just this. And he's showing so much emotion and acting and just sitting still. And I'm just like, man, I actually did forget how fucking great Terrence Howard is in this movie. And that's when I started to like take notice, and then whoop that trick hit, and I was like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm in this. Now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's such a, and a lot of people will like you know say it's like oh like you know, people will throw this and like Eight Mile together, two different films. They are not the same thing except rap is the main focal point. But uh, Hustle and Flow is is actually incredibly well done. You just have to get in, you just have to be in the mindset for it, uh, and be ready for how it's gonna go. And then once they get into the thick of it, where you're all of a sudden like, hey, I got this sound guy coming in, and it's DJ Quarles. He's like, he, you know he white, right? No, no <laughs> light skinned. And it's just like, <laughs> it's, it's such great dialogue through the film. And um, and it's like to the point where you start to actually, because like Terrence Howard's character, he's such a conflicted character. Because it's like, well, because like, like, yeah, because because he's a horrible person. Yeah, he's not a good person. He's like, horrible. Yeah. Even he's his own. He's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a jerk. He's a he's a crook for that matter. And, yeah. and you know, and even after he's like beating the shit out of people and goes to jail, you're still kind of rooting for him. It's like exactly. wait. it's like it, it's because it's the American dream kind of thing. And it's like because like you're watching this, you're like, I really want him to succeed, but then it's like everyone, every girl is terrified of him because like because he beats the shit out of them. You don't actually ever see him beat them nobody oh, does but you know he does and you could and, and, and it's smart that they didn't let him do it because then it's like oh well, then there's no re- there's no redeeming him because if you see him beat up taron manning or taraji or the annoying third one then it's like well th- no he's 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 done as a character like you can't root for him anymore but you have this aura around his that you know he does you know because they have the fear of god in them whenever he gets up in their face and so it's one of those things where it's just like he's a very complex, conflicted character to root for. You want him to root for because a because his raps are good, and you got DJ Quarles and Anthony Anderson and Taraji and Taryn. They're all likable characters for the the format that they're in. And but but Terrence Howard is the main focal point of that, and his character is a fucking prick. And but then but it's like it's it, he is, but it's like but he cares so much about this thing that it it sheds away the negativity around him. And you're just like, I really want him to do well. I want him to succeed. And it's one of those things where it's like, but at the end of the movie, you don't ever like you, 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 you kind of have to write your own happy ending to it. Cause like even his happy ending isn't like for him, it's like, I've made it. And he really fucking hasn't. He hasn't. Uh, he, you hope that he does, but it's like at the at the end where where the two guys give him the mixtape, he's like, "Oh, I made it." And it's like, no, you you, you you haven't yet. Your music played on the radio like once. Like, calm, calm the fuck down. But you have to almost like write your own happy end. It's like, oh yeah, then he became better, bigger than Skinny Black, and all this kind of well, shit. His whole mindset was like, if I can just get my stuff out there, people can hear it, then I know I'll be a star. So he thinks as soon as he's played on the radio once, that yeah, he's made it. But I mean, has that, he? I don't know. But I mean. You're, it's one of those things where it's like, we're to back then, I say back then, like it was so much longer, it was like 18 years ago. 
he, he's going to have this moniker of he beat the shit out of Skinny Black and he shot one of Skinny Black's bodyguards. He's going to have that moniker over him. And then it's like, oh, but he, he actually, his rap game is actually fucking sick. That'll get him going. It's whether or not he keeps it going and stays out of fucking jail. Because doesn't they say at the end he's like he stays in jail for a year? I would say at least. <laughs> well, because well, Anthony Anderson comes in and Taraji's baby has been born, mm -hmm. and he's like, "I got eleven months worth of time, or something like that." So it's like, I, I think he's go he's there for a year, maybe six months on good behavior or some shit. I don't know. They don't ever actually say his sentence, but he doesn't strike me as a good behavior kind of guy, though. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, if he's a rap man now, I mean, he, he could probably just be like, "I'm in here, rap I'm in here writing lyrics and shit. Like, just leave me alone." And but I remember him them saying eleven months yeah. uh, through it. But yeah, it's. The music is, like I said, it's, it's really good. It's really compelling. And that's the other thing, too. It's like, it's one of those things where he acts like a hard ass around everyone. But when he knows he's not in the, because um, it's one scene in particular I'm going to talk about. It's, uh, he knows his place. And he knows when he's out of his element of reach. Because there's that one point where he's trying to shoot. Or he's trying to get the track down. And Anthony is like, is there so, is someone playing? Oh, like, I knew that scene you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes next door, and this other dude's a fucking beast of a dude. He's like, hey, man, no disrespect. Like, you don't have to do this, but here's a peace offering. Like, like, I know we ain't seen eye to eye before. Like, but... out of respect, could you, could, you, could you just give me this? And he's like, see, he's like, I'm not like, oh, whoa. He's like, nah, man, like, you will fucking kill me. So, like, <laughs> here's we... some weed, please. Yeah. Here's some weed. Could, could you just, I, I got some important shit happening next door. I just need it down. And it's like it's one of those things where it's like his character knows when to like not don't let the ego take you. And it's like, no, nah, no, nah, my ego will kill me in this moment. It's like even when he's with skinny black, he's like reminiscent about shit. And you can tell that he don't really care, but he's gotta play it up with skinny. And then, but like, even at that like point, like he when he gets pushed too far, he can't control it. But it was that one moment where he has to go across the street. I'm just like, well, I was like, it's like this is I like Terrence Howard's killing this role. He really, oh, yeah. really is. And it's if honestly, it's one of those things where Terrence Howard, the act, the actual actor, not the character, dude can't get out of his own way. Dude could have been still in the MCU on Secret Invasion right now. He could be on that show right now. But dude couldn't get out of his own way. And I'm not saying he's wrong and what got him kicked out of the MCU. He just wanted more money. But you don't ask to get. Didn't he ask to get paid just as much as Robert Downey? Something like that. Or something like that. Dude, no, like you're not. You're not Iron Man. You're Rhodey. He's like no. Like you sh should. you get paid more? Absolutely. You should get paid more. You're not gonna get RDJ. But, but he overshot it until they were just like, yeah, screw this. Yeah, it's like not nah, fucking. We don't want to work. It's, it's like when Alec Baldwin killed his. Well, not didn't kill his career, but you know he could have been Jack Ryan forever. But he's like, I want too much money, and they're like, you're not worth that much money. And she says, hey, I quit. I said, fine. And they hired Harrison Ford and paid him more money than they were than Alec Baldwin was asking for. Because <laughs> Harrison Ford was just like, oh, Harrison Ford, whatever yeah. you want me to do. But it's you know, like, you got to understand, Alec, you are not Harrison Ford yet. So, <laughs> you can't. Yeah, it's like, and, and Don Cheadle, Don Cheadle just go in just to shoot it. He don't care. Because he knows this is going to be huge. I'll make my money later. Let me get my foot in the door. <laughs> because I'm more established than Terrence Howard. Right. <laughs> so it's like, Terrence Howard could have been could have been like set for life. And he probably still is because of Empire. But Terrence Howard can't get out of his own way. But this movie right here, though, solidified Terrence Howard as a as a as a great actor. Um, anything else you'd like to add for Hustle Flow? Just that I also like the the trajectory of the of the two main girls, Taraji P. Henson and Taryn Manning, because we well, yeah. could have been a story just about him, but obviously they showed a Taraji kind of coming out of her shell and gets to be a part of this. And like, you can tell that she's been kind of nothing her whole life. And just the first time she hears her voice, oh, the, singing, the playback, she's like, you can almost yes, bring tears such, to her such eyes. A, such a great moment for her. I really love the way that looked. And then Taryn Manning to a lesser extent, it's like, she just wants to be a part of it. She wants to do something. And so finally at the end, she gets to be the one who helps like go promote him and stuff. And she feels like a part she gets of to be it. his fucking manager. And yeah, shit. yeah. Now yeah. she's in charge because <laughs> she is in charge kind of thing. But yeah, and it's like, and I, I love that one moment too, where like it, I think it's when Taraji gives him like a lava lamp or something. No, no, no. Well, it's like it, that. That was I think it's what gave him notice of hey, we need to bring them in. But it was more like when she gave him the chain, where it's like she is, she's my heart. Like she's the one that keeps me, because she is like Taraji. Like we don't know her prior to 
Mm -hmm. her being pregnant. Like, so we don't know what her character was like when she was a hoe. But she's such like a soft, sweet, spoken, like woman. And it's just like, you probably got brought into this game probably because you didn't know how to defend yourself. And you probably just or were used to getting just steamrolled over by people and you just want to make everyone happy. And you, this is probably how you got to this life. Got and Shell seems like she's like his girl, not just yeah. one of his not one of his hoes, you know. Well, yeah, because you even have that one moment too, where where the third hoe, like I said, I, we don't remember her name, but it was like that moment where she he's kicking her out of the house, Alexis. and then what's that? Lexus. I meant I meant the actress's name. Oh, Paula Jai Parker. <laughs> yeah, where it's like, and at that moment, it's like, chick had to go. She had to go. Like she was the toxic part of it. Like it's like it's almost like she wanted to get hit. Not that I'm endorsing it, but it's like he, it's, it's like she was, she want, it's like she wanted him to do something, but she didn't want to get kicked out of the house. I think she just wanted to get slapped around a little bit for some reason. But like, you have that moment where like he throws her out of the house and it's like, oh, wait, but she does have a kid with him. And like he's taking the kid and Taraji's like, no, no, no. He was like, well, Taraji, you can't keep the kid. The mom's leaving. But it's like, and then you never hear from, the, you never see the kid anymore. The kid's just gone from the movie, but you do get to see her again hearing his music going, son of a bitch, kind of thing. But it's like that moment there, too, because it's like Taraji, like, kind of treated that kid like it was her kid, and he was, mm -hmm. he was basically snatched that kid away from her and just put him, put that boy on the, the fucking post, you know, like, you know, bye, kind of thing. It's like, we don't know what happened with that kid. It's like, I hope that kid found somewhere safe with, with the mom, but. But yeah, no, T uh, Taraji and Taryn Manning. Like, so Taryn Manning, she's... Because, like, I know Taryn Manning from Sons of Anarchy and, obviously, the Orange is the New Black and, and this. She doesn't really do a whole lot. Or she is. It's it's under-the-radar stuff that I don't ever really watch. But I like her and everything she's in. I think, what wasn't she in, like, a fucking Britney Spears movie? Crossroads, yep. Crossroads. I was like, yeah, it's like, it wasn't... Yeah, it was like... She was, like, one of the friends in that with... Was it Rosario Dawson? And Crossroads. Um, that was her, Brittany, Zoe Saldana. Zoe Saldana. Yeah. yeah. So it's like she's she's always I've always liked her and everything she's in, but she doesn't do a whole like a lot of big shit. No. Yeah. You know, because I know I, I just think more of those Hollywood studios just don't look at her for that stuff. But but yeah, Hustle Flow definitely a movie that drama, but also like I said it. I don't want to say it's feel good because it's not feel good, but it, like I said, because once again, you're rooting for an asshole character to succeed. But it's almost you want him to succeed because everyone around him that you do like would succeed because of him. Because he doesn't seem like the type of character that's like, I've made it now. Fuck all you. Like, he's like, nah. He's like, he seems like the kind of character like, I made it. We're all in this together. And he's going to, he's not going to like push them away. So it's like, you want him to succeed because you want the other ones to get out of the shit that they're in right now. Yeah. Kind of thing. Also, the, uh, I just want to give a heads up to uh, Anthony Anderson's wife. In the movie, mm -hmm. at least in the like, end. yeah, because like at the first you're like, oh, okay, she's gonna be a point, and then she just like loves her husband so much. She's like, okay, I'll I'll be in on this, and she, she brings just, up some sandwiches and stuff. Yeah, it's like I love that moment where she actually does sit there and she sees what her husband does, and she's just kind of instead of just going, no, 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 she's just like, I, like oh, I get, I get to I see get my, my husband's happy and what he's doing. Yeah, now. I get this now. I'm gonna be supportive, and it's like. Cause like you could, they could have just gone the one way that we always like that they were gonna go with her. It's like this is how every one of these fucking movies go. But no, they they went a different way with her. I was like, good. I like I like that this character's development into something a little you know more important. It didn't become like a this is gonna ruin their marriage and shit. It's like no, if anything, it just made them stronger. And I liked that they wrote it like that. not just the bitchy straight laced wife who doesn't want it. yeah exactly exactly because like they ran they were going that path instead of going we're not gonna stay on this road we're actually gonna go to this. like good job. Good job, movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Max and Flow available on Max. Go watch it if you haven't already. Yes. Um, that's right. I did watch it on Max. I thought it was Prime, but I think that was that was Rain Rain of Fire last week. Uh, next, we're gonna go to my film. Like I said, the underappreciated Michael Bay movie. We don't get to say that a lot about Michael Bay um, because either the movies are rightly appreciated, like the Bad Boys movies, um, or they're hated profusely, like the Transformers movies. But there is a movie in Michael Bay's verse that is a lot of fun, that is action-packed, that is really, really good, that no one seems to want to talk about. Even though it's got, to me, two great leads and at least three to four awesome supporting casts. 
And that is 2005's The Island. The Island came out July 22nd, 2005, had a budget of $126 million, had a weekend opening of $12.41 million, yikes, uh, had a uh, opening weekend ranking of number four, that was its highest ranking, and had a finished box office of $162.95 million, $35.82 million domestic, and $127.13 million international. Um, apparently, the world was, the U.S. was not in the mood for Michael Bay, but the world was. Um yeah, but this this is a movie that, and I I don't I, I know I'm gonna say this and it's probably gonna open me up to a, no oh, no there's blah 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 blah. I feel like this is a very original idea. And unless, unless there's some movie from like the seventies, sixties, whatever, it's like just the same fucking movie. It's like I I don't know, but the I loved the. Is there another movie? You know that better than I do. Is there? I mean, there are, there are movies like that? that have touched on cloning and things like that, but I think this is the first one that kind of touched on it from like the clones' point of view and how you know they don't realize that they're just there as spare parts, things like that. Now this is it's original in that respect. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. It's like just the originality of it. Like, like cloning's not original. Cloning's been around for a while, but but cloning in terms of you have you're cloning these bodies to be exact at replicas of the person, the main person, to just use them. Like you said, as spare parts, or and to that, carry a baby for them, or things like that. Exactly, yeah. like oh, you know, then that and that's what the main plot of this movie is: is that you have this company. I'm blanking on the company name off the top of the head, um, and you basically have this this underground bunker of all these clones. They don't know they're clones, uh, but basically, like let's say I was dying of liver disease and I was going to lose my liver. Instead of me trying to find a person out there in the world that matches me to the point where they can donate their liver to me i granted i'm not a millionaire but i think i think they say at one point like a clone costs five million dollars uh i could have them clone me raise him up and then by the time it's ready for me to have that surgery to remove my liver they kill my clone which you wouldn't have had to really kill them to take the liver just fucking do the surgery they can still live and and give me their clone or they give me their liver so i can live longer and or like in terms of other like like you said uh if if, if like if i had a wife and she couldn't have a baby instead of trying to find a surrogate mother or adoption or well, like it's, i think it was just if somebody wants to have a baby doesn't want to have to carry the baby that too that's Cause too. like cause like scott johansson's character is a famous actress she doesn't want to you know exactly her, her career kind of thing exactly then i can clone my wife she can get pregnant and then she has the baby and then we take the baby home and then fuck it, just kill the clone. It's just like, once again, she doesn't have to die. You could just keep her around in case. What's well, gonna you can't happen? because from the clone's point of view, the, 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 if she has a baby and then they send her back, like she now knows what's going on. So she No, would... no, you could have like done like a, like made it look like there was there's complications in, in the thing and then she lost the baby and then she just, you send her back out you know to the to the colony you so, so for, the, for the women that might have worked for the women in that situation the pregnancy situation yeah. but i think for the for the other ones because because usually when they call somebody up to harvest their organs or whatever they they tell them they've won this lottery they get to go live on the island yeah, that's and that's and that's what they do is like they're the, the 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 story that they're telling these clones is that there was like this this big pandemic like world ender thing and they're the survivors. And there's this island out there in the world that is safe from all the disease and everything that, the, that destroyed the world to begin with. And they basically have a lottery and they win the lottery. They get to go to the island, which effectively they're basically going to have yeah. surgery on them. Basically they, just, they just win the lottery when they, they're they're What do they call them? They're, they're hosts. Yeah. They're hosts. When, they, when, they, when they need them, they just call their name and say, oh, you won the lottery. Exactly. And then sponsors, you never see them again. Sponsors, yeah. yeah, they're sponsors. And then you never see them again because they're on the island, aka they're dead. And we're following the life of the clones. We got Ewan McGregor, who plays uh, Link, Lincoln. Uh, Six Echo. Six Echo. I almost said Three Echo. And then Scarlett Johansson, who, in my opinion, the most beautiful version of Scarlett Johansson. Like, she's just fucking, like, she's gorgeous in general. But this movie, like, the lighting on her, Michael Bay makes sure she looks out of this fucking if there's world. There's one thing Michael Bay is an expert at. It's 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 Making filming beautiful her, women. 
Yes, but Scarlett Johansson, look there is never a moment in this movie where Scar- Scarlett Johansson doesn't look like a fucking goddess in this film. She's playing Xbox with a ponytail, and she still looks fucking amazing through this whole damn movie. Um, and and she's uh, Jordan uh, Jordan Three Delta, Two Delta, Two Delta, and you're you know they're basically they wake up they. Uh, <laughs> They wake up to go pee. They can find that their sodium levels are too high, so they control what they eat. And, uh, you know, if they have nightmares, they have to go speak to a psych. They, like, you know, telepathically, like, you know, listen to their nightmares. They have to then go see a psychiatrist and shit. Like, control every facet of their lives so that way they're at the tip-top condition. So that way their organs and everything are perfect for their sponsors. And the problem that we're happening is that with Ewan McGregor's Lincoln character is he's starting to have these moments, these dreams that aren't his, they're of his sponsor. And so it's starting to make him question things that are happening. You know, why, why aren't we able to do this? Why aren't we able to do this? And you know, what's out there? Why do we keep finding more survivors? If you know, we're all supposed to be in the bunker, but we keep getting more and more new people showing up, all this kind of stuff. And then he basically sneaks off one night and sees what actually happens when you go to the island. And at first, you know, he's freaking out. He doesn't know what to do. But then Scarlett Johansson, who he's developed a friendship with, not a relationship because they've taken the ability of sex out of their brains. And not, I think they said that they're, they're, they're taught all the way up to a 15 year old. Mm -hmm. Um, So they, they're, you know, right at that cusp of like adolescence where it's like, but they don't even, I don't, they don't know about sex. They don't hurt. They don't, they don't, they've removed any aspect of sex even kissing, nothing physical connection to to the opposite sex or same sex uh, that would make them want to do that. They're just really close friends. Now they're even there's there's tension because every time like they have like proximity warnings and stuff where like they have security people saying, "Hey, you guys need to fucking separate." But it's this it's this ability that like you can tell him and Jordan are like they like each other, but they mm-hmm. don't know they they they're, they don't it's know more that. a platonic thing. Yeah, yeah they're platonic. But you could tell if they knew about sex and they knew about this stuff, they, they, they wouldn't be. They'd be, you know, hooking up and shit. But Jordan ends up winning the lottery. And so then at this point, it forces Lincoln to go, we got to fucking find a way to escape. And then, of course, they break out into the real world. And then it becomes a manhunt. Uh, you know, and Sean Bean, who we love, it runs the organization. And uh, he basically hires mercenaries, a.k.a. our guy that we talked about so highly, uh, um, Jamin Hansu. John, yeah, Jamin Hansu is hunting them down. And it's them in the real world trying to figure out the real world while also trying to survive at the same time because they're being hunted everywhere. Because they because like you McGregor's character is this rich uh like flanderer guy who like builds boats and shit. And Scarlett Johansson's like a fucking model actress. She was a model actress, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like and so like they're not like really people that could just kind of like blend in in general uh and it's it's an action-packed story like i said it's a unique story and i i really love i love the style of this is shot because it is in the future it's like 2030s or something like that so you do get some futuristic stuff like flying cars and flying trains and you do get some futuristic stuff but it's still very grounded to a point in real world um i think performance wise you don't have the, the stupid michael bay adolescent humor that he does so much like there is humor but it's not like the the I'm a 13 year old and I think this is funny kind of humor and anyone our age doesn't think it like, it's actually relatively smart humor throughout the film. Yeah. Cause it's either, I mean, like this, like Steve Buscemi has his like kind of some one liners, things like that. But otherwise a lot of, a lot of the humor comes in more the fish out of water story because yeah. you have these two people who have never exposed the outside world and they only have basically the mentality of like a, you know, a, a kid, yeah. a tween essentially and so it's like so they're out in the world going like, oh, what is this stuff you know it's that, that's where the comedy kind of comes in yeah just like that one part where uh, some standings in the bar and things like that yeah yeah where where, where she's like jack he's like straight up she goes <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's little things like that but but you and mcgregor and and scarlet they a their chemistry is great throughout the film but they they sell this fish out of water thing so well like i and that's the thing that i love about you mcgregor is he's got this like this boyish like smile Charm like this big like grin the kind of thing. It's like like the part where he sees the the, the motorcycle. He's like, I don't know, but I want one. Let's go get it. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Like he he's so good at that. He's so good at that. And Scar Joe's just great at being everything. Um, I've talked enough. I'm gonna let Brian take over here real quick. But I just I love, I love the world 
that they created through this. I love the, like I said, the originality of it. Like I even, even in the colony, just the stuff that they did. And I was like, damn, oh, this actually works. Like, I'm not saying that like this is good, but this works. Like this is actually really fucking smart and clever. And I just, I really, really enjoyed the fuck out of this movie. There's, there, there are hiccups in it, but I do enjoy the hell out of this film. Yeah, I, I'm a sucker for for near future sci-fi. You know, the stuff that's got the sci-fi elements to it, but it's not like you know the Star Wars kind of thing. It's it's like kind of like you said, kind of grounded in reality because it's like it's in the future, but not the far future. Things like yeah. this, things like uh, Minority yeah. Report, iRobot, things like that. I fucking um, love both those films. Yeah, so so I'm a sucker for this near fu- near future kind of setting. So I really enjoyed that. Um, you get a cast together of you know Ewan and Scarlett and Jaiman and Sean, all these people. That's great, top to bottom. Um, Steve Buscemi is in there as well. Buscemi is great. I love Buscemi. Michael Hurt Duncan is in this one as well. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's got a great cast, top to bottom, especially Jimon. I love seeing him Jimon get big roles. Um, it's definitely a Michael Bay movie because oh, absolutely the action went once the action starts, the car crashes and the car chase thing is totally over the top. It's insane. I mean, actually, he he saved money by reusing some shots from Bad Boys mm-hmm. Two in this and just like CGI and some changes, and then they went on to take stuff from this and use it in the Transformers movies. You can yep. go on YouTube and Google it. You'll see. Yeah, they like they like it, it, it's it's the it's the one main highway scene. Like, didn't they like CGI out the, the 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 train wheel and put a like transformer in there? Yeah, instead of, like the train wheel like smashing a car. It's like yeah, yeah. there's a whole like, montage of like all yeah. the scenes that is reused. Which which good for it, him. Save some it, money. Yeah, it, it fucking works. Because that's one thing I'll say for Michael Bay is Michael Bay makes expensive movies, but the money's always on screen. He's efficient. Because like, first of all, he's a great. He started out as a cinematographer. And and he and he does it. His movies, I think, all look great. I think they're filmed great and, until he found drones. That's, we won't get into yeah, that. Yeah, the drone thing is just stupid. But um, but I mean, it, they, they all look great. All the money's on screen. He even he even makes sure the money is there to put on screen because he loves his product placement. I mean, in yeah. this one, just in the first like half hour or something, you're seeing like what Xbox. I think you see Budweiser. You see uh, uh, the Aquafina. water. Oh, yeah, what kind of water was it? I think it was Aquafina. Yeah, um, I an Aquafina. Cadillac is kind of. Com- Prominently um, you know, on the vehicle. Uh, Puma, Pumas for the yeah. for the outfits. So, so he, he definitely goes and finds some extra deals to make some money to put on screen. Yeah. Um. But so it's it's very much a Michael Bay movie, and you can tell. But I I I think that's a good thing. I like Michael Bay. I I don't know of Michael Bay movie that I hate. Honestly, I think I like the Transformers all- movies. What's that? Transformers movies. I well the hmm, yeah four and five. Yeah, I'll give you that. And two. I know you like two for some weird reason. Two. I don't mind two. Um, but yeah, there's that. Um, I like, I did like that. Um, Ewan McGregor, I think he did a real good job creating two very distinct personalities because yep. even though they're clones, they aren't going to act exactly the same. The one of them has a much lower mentality than the other as far as education, things like that. And the fact that he said, well, this, his character is Scottish. Yeah. It's like, but he wasn't raised, he was raised in with all people, just American accent. So he wouldn't have that accent. Um, so I, I really liked that they kind of had that so you could really tell them apart. I will say, Ewan McGregor, I've said this before, he's like Charlie Hunnam to me in that when he does an American accent, he kind of overdoes the American accent. And so it sounds a little odd, but I can get past that. Um, I will say his his sponsor, uh, Tom Lincoln, I think his name was. Yeah, Tom Tom Lincoln. He gets killed in this movie. He didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> he really didn't. He really that's a, that's the one thing. Uh, and I was gonna bring it up after after you talked. I guess I never noticed it the first time watching it because I'm just so into like the characters. Lincoln and, and Jordan, they kill a fuckload of people in this movie. <laughs> and these are all innocent people. There are people that either like 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 Tom Lincoln, who you know he just Tom Lincoln. Tom oh, Lincoln just cloned. He he went to the service and he didn't even know. Nobody knew at this point in the outside world that their clones were alive and or I mean they were conscious and sentient or whatever. So then and then there's all the people like security guards, things like that, just doing their jobs. Yeah, and but everyone on the highway, they all. I mean, granted, once again, doing their jobs, they're hunting them down because that's their job. They die. Everyone on the fucking um when they're on the giant R. And they run through. Uh, they when he runs through the building with the with the flying motorcycle, he clearly kills that one dude. <laughs> that one dude gets clipped, and that dude is not like that dude's not walking again. That's just a random guy in, in the office just going about his day. And then that when they're on that giant arm, that thing falls to the ground. There's at least twenty plus people who die from that. They kill a lot of people unknowingly. Kill a lot of people, except for the train thing. They, they kill. And also, 
but but oh, I, I guess you know, I guess you can balance oh, up oh, by oh, saying oh. that. But they're saving hundreds of others in the clones that are going to die. They're saving thousands. Yeah, because we don't know exactly how many people. I don't are know how many there are. Yeah. Yeah, there's at least hundreds, if not a thousand, people in there. But still, they are unknowingly killing a shitload of people in this movie. But yeah, Tom Lincoln and Sarah Jordan, technically, it'd be that she was going to die without, you know, Jordan's body. But so she didn't unknowingly kill Sarah. Sarah was going to die anyway. But yeah, Tom Lincoln, he, he did nothing wrong <laughs> to die in this movie. Uh, most of the people in this movie who died did not deserve to die. <laughs> they were innocent bystanders. Uh, who died it was like in the Transformers movies, like you would think, oh, a shitload of people died in the Transformers. Like, oh no, we cleared the city. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, there's thousands of people who died in every Transformers film. Oh, yeah, and, and, and honestly, even really if you watch like, like bad boys people. movies, things like that, just anybody in those tar- car chases, I guarantee oh. there were casualties all along the casualties way. Casualties up the ass. <laughs> uh, but it's a uh, but I will say this one thing that annoyed me is like, let's let's talk about this this train, this this train wheel uh truck. You tell me you didn't hear any of that. The driver, you didn't hear any of the crashes behind you. You don't feel that your load's lighter all of a sudden. Like, like I'm sorry. Or just what? as you're driving, you look in your look view in mirror. your rear view mirror to see fucking chaos behind you. Like <laughs> the noise alone that these ca- wrecks are causing, and the lighter. Also, you're like, wow, I'm driving a lot. I'm going a lot faster, and because <laughs> I feel like I'm light. No, I'm sorry. There's no way that driver didn't know what the fuck was up. He's probably. This is what I would have liked to have seen. A, it would have been funny, and B, would have been so believable. Is if the driver saw what was going on, he's like, "Shit, I ain't going back to jail," and just kept revving, like he knows what's going on, but he's like, "Oh, I ain't getting blamed for this shit," and just kept going. That would have been such a Michael Bay thing, and it would have been perfect because that's the only way to explain why this driver just kept driving the whole way through this shit. But yeah, Lincoln, Lincoln, and Jordan kill so many people in this movie, and it's like. But you got to talk up to him. It's like, like I think I think Lincoln says this one line when he's when he's Tom, where he's like, "I'm not ready to die, and I'm gonna do whatever I can to survive." Which is like that line doesn't make it make it any better that you ki- you probably have killed hundreds of people in, in a span of like two days. But they're also like fifteen year old kids playing GTA. Like they don't they don't know the cost of life in these movies. Like they throw a train train wheel at this one car, and the car literally obliterates. I mean, yeah, there are people in there, but they don't fucking understand the concept of, like, you know, they should, but they, I guess, don't. But, yeah, they kill so many people on this fucking movie. Not to mention the workers in the colony when, at the end, when they kind of destroy it all. There's so many just workers that are just collecting a paycheck. They're not even, like, a part of the killing of the clones. They're just working in the in the stacks, working in the fucking behind-the-scenes shit. That have probably died because of this shit, and it's just like, yeah, there's so many unnecessary deaths. In this film. <laughs> it's fuck. It's really rough. It's rough. I guess it's a them or us mentality. I suppose it is. Like, it is. But there's so many of them. They're them are not even against you. They're not even coming after you. They're minding their own damn business. They're minding their own lives. Well, you know, there's a lot of them like Cebu Shemi who'd be like, you know, sympathetic to you. And also, why would that's the one part too? It's like, why would you have killed Buscemi? If anything, you would have brought him in. Wouldn't have just straight up and shot him. Like you should have grabbed yeah, I'm not him. Sure why they did that? You should have grabbed him and brought him in and found out what he knew. Great, granted, because because then it's like yeah, because everyone thought that they killed him. Which also, why would you think they killed him? It was because he has their his credit card. But but it was just like these mercenaries weren't that smart to begin with. It's like why would you you did that in a crowded train station? What the fuck is wrong with you? You know, but uh, I also felt bad for his his, his girl too because she was so nice. <laughs> she finds out that like literally like an hour later he died. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Her care. I was like, she was a nice lady. Also, also Eric Stone Street it was a nobody at this time. Anyone who knows Modern Family, I, such a great moment. Like, I'll I'll give you guys a minute. Oh, shut up and get out of here. It's such a <laughs> I'm like that is that's Eric Stone Street. That's awesome. But yeah, Island is uh. I know we knocked a lot of the, you know, oh, they killed so many other people, but this movie stylized. It's, it's, I feel like this is like almost, because Michael Bay, he's all over the place. And we love bad boys, but it's like to the height of Michael Bayism. And then Transformers is the product placement height of Michael Bayism. The island, I feel like, is kind of like the perfect, like, like when you do like the, is it a Venn diagram when you have like the circle, the circle, and the mm-hmm. one in the middle? I feel like the island is like the, the next. 
it's a sweet spot because it's got the, the craziness and it's got the the product placement and it's got the humor but it's all perfectly gelled and, it's and, got and, and hot and, chicks very well yeah. exactly it handles, <laughs> it handles hot chicks it handles the humor it handles the action it handles the the stylized publicity of it all and it's in a perfect little bubble sweet spot and it never it goes out into its outer ranges of a michael bay is a movie to the point where you're going <sighs> kind of thing like it is the sweet spot film which is why it makes me wonder if people don't talk about the island or people don't know that this movie really they're just like oh yeah he made a movie with them it's like everyone loves ewan mcgregor everyone loves scar joe and everyone loves sean bean but yet and and i think most people love jamin hansu they just don't talk about him as much because he's never utilized to his fullest potential but no one talks about this fucking film yeah i mean i, I think honestly i think this one gets probably uh, is probably considered along the same level as things like well the, the well the rock got a lot of attention just because Sean Connery and things like that. But and like they, the Bad Boys was a franchise. The Termin the Transformers movies, you know, that became a whole franchise. So it's like these outliers of his like like you don't even hear people talk about like Pearl Harbor much even. Well, that's because Pearl Harbor was considered a flop. Well, but, yeah. right. But I'm but I'm saying if you look back at his filmography, if you would sell so many lists of movies, they'd forget the island, they'd forget Pearl Harbor, they'd forget some of these movies because it's like they aren't the ones that he's known for his big, you know, huge bombastic you, blockbuster kind yeah, of thing. I mean you have like you have like pain and gain, which people know because it's the rock. Mm -hmm. But and then you have like 13 hours, which everyone forgets that that's a fucking Michael Bay movie because it's really, really good. Not that Michael Bay doesn't make good movies, but it's like you have like these outliers like 13 hours, Pain and Gain, Pearl Harbor and the island and even, I guess, Ambulance now. But that's just because it's his most recent one that people forget because it's not Bad Boys, Transformers and The Rock. But I feel like even out of those outliers, the island is the one that everyone just forgets about. And it's it, to me, it's one of his strongest movies. Because it is that perfect, you know, Venn diagram sweet spot of a Michael Bay film. It's got the best of everything that he does without overusing it and without going ridiculously stupid. Um, I feel like not enough people watch this film. And this is not on anything, at least without having to pay to rent it. This is not on any streaming services right now, I believe, right? Um, if your library uses Hoopla, you can watch it through that. Or actually, it's on Pluto TV. Yeah, That's, Pluto. Man. You know what? Pay to rent it because Pluto is the worst with ads. Pluto is horrible with ads. <laughs> what movie was it? Was it the? Oh God! It was some heist. Was it? It was the heist. It was mm -hmm. the heist. I had to watch it. I think for trivia, or was it? Or was it for you for Crusaders? It might have been something for me. Well, you watched the heist for me. Yeah. yeah, and it was on Pluto TV, and it was the most awful experience because it was like it was like a, a commercial every seven minutes. And it was the it was the Kevin Hart like and Spotify, was, and they often play the same commercial. And it was the same something. one, and it was it made me not enjoy the movie because every five minutes, five to seven minutes, it was Kevin Hart going. What? So yeah, no, this is on Pluto TV. But unless you, unless the commercials are not obnoxiously annoying, then you'll be fine. If they are, pay the three bucks to see the island. It's worth it. It's a worthy three buck three dollar purchase. Um, anything else you want to add for the island before we go? Just two things I was talking about with, with Steve Buscemi's character. One kind, one good, and one kind of bad. I, I really like the one line when they're trying to figure out why why their sponsors, you know, wouldn't. I, I want to say, I want to say, if it's, if it's my thing, I was trying to say this is a great line. Yeah, the great line is it says, "Just because people want to eat the burger doesn't mean they want to meet the cow." That is a great fucking. And line. that kind of sums up the whole movie and the whole, you know, from the viewpoint of the sponsors. Like, I really liked that line. I thought that was a great line to throw in there. But then later on in the movie, when um, he's talking, why doesn't he? Why don't you go to the island? He talks about, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to be dying. I got cirrhosis and all this stuff. He goes from years of philandering. And he goes, what does oh, that no, mean? No, he's got hepatitis. He's hepatitis. Got cirrhosis. It was, it was cirrhosis hepatitis. Oh, that what it was okay. Yeah. Because he was saying that because then he was like, what does that mean? He goes, lots and lots of lots and lots of sex. And I'm like, sex. What does that have to do with cirrhosis? And then I'm like, well, is it because Budweiser is a sponsor? They didn't want somebody to talk about dying because they drink too much. I don't know. No, it was because it was, it was he had hepatitis. I don't understand. Remember, it was hepatitis, no. but um, but yeah, and I love that one. He's like, You were with her, you've never had sex. Oh, I ain't gonna ruin it for you. <laughs> just trust me, it's, it's a great. Love it. Yes, um, <laughs> yeah, like I said, there's so many like just great little zingers in this movie, but like the Blue Chevy one is 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 great, and I also love that one when 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 Tom uh calls the the agency and he, and he it's on a video call and he's like. I'd like to know why my my uh, my clone is in my room or my living my room right now. Is sitting on my fucking couch? And she's like, uh, let me push it home. Yeah, do that. <laughs> she's like, well, that poor lady. She's like, I, I, what? <laughs> kind of thing. And then also, um, oh, God, what's his name? Kim. 
Oh, from Sons Kim of Anarchy. Coates? Huh? Kim Coates. Kim Coates. I'm so not used to seeing him being like a tie wheeling like little bitch because he's he's like Sons of Anarchy, but it's like I love him in this where he's like he's he's like cut the shite, okay? He's like I'm sorry, just a jibber jabber. And he just keeps to- <laughs> It's such a it's such an uh, oddball casting that I love because that's so not Kim Coates. Like he's not that kind of an actor, and I love that they got him for that. Well, see, uh, it, felt, it felt normal to me only because the one thing I know him most from is Last Boy Scout, where he played kind of the same role. <laughs> see, and I know him from Sons of Anarchy, which yeah. he's one of my favorite characters on on Sons of Anarchy. But uh, I will say, I a total miscasting choice. Granted, this movie came out afterwards. Uh, the annoying friend, the one who had like the. Uh, the paper about how the lottery works mm-hmm. and the one that just kept talking. He's like, I kind of wish this guy dies. Cause he's so fucking annoying just by his looks in this movie. How the fuck was he not cast as a hobbit in the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit movies? Because I'm watching, I was like, do I know him from the, from the Lord of the Rings? movies? like, he's gotta be a hobbit somewhere. And no, he's not in any of those films. I was like, how did this guy not get casted in any of the Hobbit Lord of the Rings films? Cause this guy with that hair, that is a perfect casting choice absolutely perfect casting choice um but yeah it's a uh, he was the most the i know him from is i believe he was a ferengi in next generation on the tv show or, or one of those star trek shows yeah yeah he's such an annoying fucking character but it's like it's a character you need to have but he's still a very annoying character um but yeah that is that is the island that's our show we hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you guys did go ahead that like share and subscribe to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos pop up on the movie crusaders and don't forget to follow us on all the social medias out you see below this week has been a pretty busy week for me, work-wise, personal life-wise. So I have not got to see Barbie, Oppenheimer, or they clone Tyrone. I will be seeing all three, not at the same time. Well, two of them at the same time. I will be seeing Barbie and Oppenheimer on Tuesday. So there will be a review out probably Wednesday, Thursday night for that. And they clone Tyrone, I'm going to finish watching this weekend. And I may or may not have a review for that. I don't know. But... Brian has seen all three. So, Brian, real quick, Barbie, go. Brian has his priorities straight, so he's seen these movies. Um, <laughs> Sean is on a budget, bitch. <laughs> Barbie, Barbie um, it's a good movie. It's fun. Um, it it, it beats you over the head with its message, especially in, towards the ending. But I, I will not deny it's fun. Now, granted, I am not its, its target audience. I am part of the evil patriarchy, which you'll hear that word 12,003 times in that movie. Um <laughs> But it's enjoyable, especially, you know, I, obviously Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling are great in it. Um, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, yeah. Oppenheimer, I think, is, I've, I've said it's a very good movie, but it is not a great movie. Uh, most of that's because it's, uh, I don't mind long movies, but this one did not need to be three hours. They have, a, like, half the movie is spent talking about, you know, suspicions of Communist Party connections and things like that. It's like, no, the trailer sold me a movie on the making and testing the bomb. That's all I wanted. All this other stuff just seemed like extra. But very good movie, very well acted. I enjoyed it. Um, I, it. I will say it has the same problem as Tenet in that the music is constant and overbearing and to the point in some scenes it's intrusive and you can't even make out dialogue. I, in a have, I have heard there are certain theaters where people have had issues hearing dialogue in the film. Yeah, I, I would, it's not quite to the level of Tenet, but it's it, there. It, the music is a little much. It's always been a Christopher Nolan problem. Um, and they clone Tyrone. Uh, that's, just, that, that's just a fun movie. It, it's on Netflix. Go check it out. It's fun. All right. Uh, also, a movie that I brought up during the summer movie preview, Cobweb, also came out this week. I not by me, it. sadly. Yeah, Brian, <laughs> for once, for once, I have a movie out near me that Brian doesn't have, but I also have to watch these movies, and so Cobweb is not going to get watched. Event whenever it pops on streaming, I'll watch, and if it's worth talking about, I'll I will, I will bring that movie to you guys' attention. Um, next week, though, we will be back again for the Week of Crusaders, Brian's film is a movie that he has uh it's one of those movies that brian praises to the moon uh so many times um and i think i've watched it for the first time a year or two ago it's good it's good uh so i'll have to rewatch it again i think he just really loves it for one main person in the movie which obviously the lead because they're great in it uh but it's a uh it's a spy, action spy thriller yeah. action spy thriller film and mine is a film that um, I have a heart. It's a drama. It's a drama. It's a dramedy. It's a dramedy. It's funny, but it's a drama. I don't really know how I want to describe it. How would you describe it? 
without giving it away, there's not much you can do. But it, 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 kind of in the, a in the neighborhood, vein of a, a, a neighbor, a neighborhood dramedy. Is that sure. the best way to probably pull that off without giving shit away? Sure. A neighborhood dramedy. Uh, anyway. it's, a, it's a dramedy with some social commentary to it. There yes. You. Okay. That we'll, we'll go with that. Much like they clone Tyrone to a point. Um, but yeah, figure out what those movies are. Good luck, because that is not good clues at all <laughs> for that shit. Um, also, next week, uh, ha Haunted Mansion comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping to see it next week. We'll have a review for it here on the channel as well. So we have a lot of videos that are be coming up here in the next week. So be on the lookout for all those. But more or less, Brian and Michaels and myself will always be here to talk about movies with you guys. We hope you guys stay tuned, watch, and enjoy. But until next time, we are the Movie Crusaders. And in case we don't see you, go watch the movies and go have some fun. You're still here. It's over. Go home. <laughs>